Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with our post-race media availability in today's Goodies Headache Relief Shot 500 here at Martinsville Speedway. We are now joined by our second place finisher, <coughs> Jamie McMurray. Jamie, big battle there at the end between you and Jeff Gordon. Talk a little bit about the closing laps here today. Yeah, I mean, when when uh, when Jeff gave me the outside, I, I somewhat wanted that. I had struggled uh, on the inside. And knowing it was just going to be a green-white checkered, I thought that I might be able to get uh, get around him. It's, it was just, honestly, it was really hard to see. I had a uh, like a, a light smoke visor on. It was hard to see with your visor up. And when I shut it coming to, uh, to one to go, it was, it was really dark. And so I was a little bit uh, nervous. I haven't done a restart in the new restart zone. And it was kind of hard to see where the, exactly the restart zone was. So, um, you know, I had a lot on my mind there. I, I, I just you know, I drove as hard as I could. Jeff, uh, Jeff was on the inside, and his, his car just uh, stuck a little bit better than mine. And um, I was hoping I could just get close enough to him down the back stretch that I could make some more drama for today versus what we already had. Uh, but I just I spun the tires really bad off turn two and, and was not able to, uh, to, get, to get to his back. All right. Yeah, I know. I should have dumped your ass. I know. And we are now also joined by Kyle Bush, who finished fifth in today's Goodies Headache Relief Shot 500. Kyle, quite an exciting finish there at the end. Um, just talk about your final laps here today at Martinsville. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite exciting there, I guess, at the, the later stages of the race. But, uh, you know, it was exciting for us in the beginning part of the the race unfortunately I, I made a mistake there early and touched the water getting into one holding my car too tight to the curb to try to stay off of the three car and uh unfortunately just drove me right into him and um you know we spun him out spun myself out had some damage to the car after that and just didn't quite feel right thereafter I, I wasn't sure what what bent but something was definitely a miss on the front end but adam made some good changes to the car throughout the rest of the day to uh, to adjust the car to kind of free it up a little bit for me to make sure we could roll the middle and uh, i felt like that was where our strong suit was and we kind of suffered a little bit on forward drive late in the going, but um, all in all, that, that center took care of us today. So, um, you know, can't say enough about our M&M's crispy guys. They did a great job and come home with the top five. So we're thrilled for that and uh, time to move on. <coughs> all right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start up here with Jenna. Jennifer, AP Kyle, I'm sorry I, I didn't hear the first things you said. You you hit water there on the apron? Yeah, there was some. It was <coughs> damp. I don't know if there was there was water. I could see it at the end of the race with the lights the way they were. You could see the the little bit of uh, of sheen shine there. And so uh, yeah, I hit water. It was damp all day. Um, everybody kind of guarded to get away from it, but my car loves rolling the curb, so I was just trying to be as tight to it as I could. So you and your teammate are both in that accident, and at that time, it's like, oh my god. Joe Gibbs Racing, horrible day. What does it say for both of you to kind of come back and salvage it? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did a really good job. I, I hate that uh, my car was bent up and, and we weren't able to be better than what we were there at the end. I was really just hindered by what the front end had for me there after I made contact with, uh, you know, with the three car. But um, all in all, you know, I, I'm thrilled for our day. I, I wish I didn't screw up Carl's day. I hate it for him and those guys. They, they obviously didn't recover quite as good as we did, so I hate it. That, uh, that I put them in a little bit too deep of a hole, I'm sure, but uh, not as deep of a hole as some other guys there in the, in the deep, deep field. So uh, hopefully he can come out and we can both be okay. And I know it's supposed to be one question only, but there's not many people in here. So um, where do you guys stand uh, on, maybe not specifically Kenseth and Logano, but on, on retaliation and payback? Matt did have a comment of you've got to maintain respect in the garage and sort of indicated that he had to do that. Well, I um, I will say that I feel like I get along with uh, with everyone in the garage, most everyone, and um, I am I am a nice guy. And the only guy I've ever been into it with is Matt, and we wrecked each other two or three times in 2004 and five, um, Bristol, Loudon. We we wrecked each other, uh, yeah, at least two or three times. Um, so I know that, and he's turned out to be one of my best friends. But I would say, um, at, growing up, Terry Labonte, Ricky Rudd. Um, those were guys you just did not mess with because you knew that they would retaliate. And Matt Kent is in that same category. I, um, you know, Matt is just uh, Matt races everyone fair and he races hard. And and I feel like you know if he thinks that uh, that there could have been better decisions made, then then so be it. Are you scared to say something because he's your teammate? I'm not scared to say anything because okay. he's my teammate. Okay. I love Matt Kenseth. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Did he do anything wrong? I don't know. Did he do anything right? I don't know. I think it all depends on whose name's above the door, on whether or not you're allowed to do it. It's I boys being so. boys right now, yeah. but you got to be consistent. You know, I, I definitely feel NASCAR is very consistent in being inconsistent on calls, and I think it's BS. And they better, <laughs> I say they better, but uh, they don't have to listen to me for squat, so it really doesn't matter what I say. You should have stopped talking about three minutes ago. <laughs> Any final questions for Jamie or Kyle? Oh, go, go ahead. Wow. Um, I think it, I think it was really cool. I think this is probably if Jeff Gordon was going to win at a racetrack, I think Martinsville is probably the racetrack to win at. You know, he obviously is his um, was the first. I, well, there was a lot of good cars, there were good drivers here before Jeff Gordon, but Jeff Gordon had his heyday here for sure. And uh, it's really cool that his heyday continued into his last season here at Martinsville, and he was able to score that victory. So uh, that puts him on to Homestead, and uh, that's a car we're going to have to race, no doubt about it. You know, I said that uh, <clears throat> earlier this week. You know, I said that that if Jeff made it to Homestead, that he would be a guy that I don't believe could beat the 24 or could beat the 22 straight up. Um, but if the 22 ain't there, Jeff's going to be a contender. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, For me, you know, Jeff Gordon is the uh, the only die cast or T-shirt that I ever bought uh, growing up before I, before I made it to NASCAR. Um, so it was a really cool moment for me to get to battle with him on a green-white checkered at Martinsville. Um, I certainly wish it would have turned out uh, a little bit differently, but but it's uh, that's a really good memory for me and a very good moment that uh, that that I will not uh, will not forget. All right, thanks for joining us today. All right, great thing.